Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at replacing the backlight in my old Radio Shack Pro 2006 scanner. I picked this thing up at a ham fest last fall real cheap and the only thing wrong with it is that burned out backlight. So let's see if we can get that fixed. Okay, so we're over here at the bench obviously. I've got the radio unplugged and the first thing we'll need to do is get it apart. Looks like there's four screws on the back. I'm going to start with those. So the top cover just popped right off, but there is a connector holding on the speaker. So I'm going to pull that off the circuit board and set this aside. And then I'm thinking the bottom cover is going to come off just the same, except there's no speaker on that. So we'll just set it aside too. So the next thing I'm going to need to do is pull the faceplate off. And it looks like there's two screws on either side here. But before I take those off, I'm going to pull these knobs off. So next up, I think I'm going to remove this screw that holds this ground strap to this shield. So now what I should be able to do is pull all these wiring harnesses out of their respective connectors. Now, I don't know if any of these are the same, so just to make sure, I'm going to mark them with a permanent marker here, just so that I can put everything back together the right way. And it looks like there's another shield there that I missed, so I'm going to pull that off. We're now finally free from the radio. So I think what I need to do now is just carefully work out this main circuit board from the bezel. It's probably just clipped in there at this point, but I'm not positive of that, so I'm going to go slow. And one thing to note is that the volume and squelch controls are on a separate board, and they're actually kind of bolted into the plastic. But I don't think we need to remove those. I'm going to leave them just the way they are and just work on prying this out. So it looks like what's holding things up is a ground wire that connects this shield to a shield on the volume and squelch control board. So I think what I'm going to do is fire up the soldering iron and desolder that blob there if I can do that. Otherwise I'll just cut this with diagonal cutters and replace it later. It looks like it's just a cut piece of a component lead in the first place anyway. Let's see if we can get this the rest of the way off now. Okay, so that one board to board connector was the circuit board that supports all the keys on the front panel here. I kind of like that design. That means those keys aren't going to fall out and get all screwed up. We can just set this aside. Okay, so now that I've got it apart, there's a little bit of a mystery here. As I was taking the thing apart, everything looked perfect in here. It looked like it had never been tampered with, but now that we're looking at the display, you can see that all that's in here is a piece of cardboard. The electroluminescent uh, backlight that would originally have been in here is gone. And then you can definitely see that something was soldered in these connections here. And then what's really a mystery is that there is sort of a bite taken out of the circuit board here. And basically what it did is it disconnected this trace that connects up from the transformer and would have gone up here to drive that electroluminescent display. On top of the bite here, there's also a cut in the trace right there. So I don't know why any of that would have been done, but I'm going to go ahead and try and throw a new electroluminescent panel in here restore this connection and see if I can get it working. So I just noticed something interesting here too. You can see there's a couple of wires. One's on this voltage regulator and the other one is on ground. And they're located right about where that cut in the circuit board would be for the display. So it looks like somebody tried to tap off of another voltage in here and run something else back there, maybe LEDs or something. But whatever it was, they ended up changing their mind and cutting these out of here. So here's a look at the new uh, electroluminescent strip that I bought to replace the old one. Now, obviously you can see this is a lot bigger than I need, so I'm going to have to cut this. This was really all I could find that was even close and at a reasonable price. I got this from eBay and I'll leave a link in the description below. You can see that it comes with an integral kind of pigtail with a connector on the end of it 
and then it comes with this little inverter box. So if I hook this up to my 12 volt power supply, you'll see that it should work. So you can see on 12 volts, it does light up and work, of course, through the little inverter box, which I'm not sure if you guys can hear that, but that thing is singing away. So I'm sure that's creating all kinds of RFI in the shack. Luckily, we're not going to need that part. I'm just going to use this. I'll cut the pigtail to length and solder it in where appropriate here on the board. What I'll do now is pull that piece of cardboard that the previous owner put in and we'll use this sort of as a baseline measurement at least for the width. Now obviously what I'm going to need to do is line this up so that it's at the corner where the wires come into the strip and then I'm going to just cut from there. Now the, the one thing here to be careful of is that we don't delaminate the strip. I guess if this delaminates it won't work. So I'm going to use a fairly sharp pair of scissors and try and cut it with those. Now I'm going to cut this a little bit long to start. I can always trim it back if I need to. So I'll just use this marker to kind of mark the corner as to where I want to cut. I'm going to do a test cut first just to see how well it cuts. Okay, and that actually cuts really nice, so I think we'll be okay. That didn't delaminate at all. I'm going to be a little more careful with this, and I wish I had more of a straight edge to use, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, let's see if this slips in. Looks like the width is correct, but due to the curvature of the material here, I'm having a hard time getting it all the way through. So I'm just gonna guide it with my screwdriver here. Okay, so that fits just fine. Now, as I expected, this is a little bit long, so I've made a mark here to try and guide me and I'm just gonna trim this back just a little bit, although I don't think it would matter. There's plenty of room in there for that to float around, I think. And before I cut this wire and start trying to solder this back into the board, I'm gonna hook it back up to the supplied inverter and make sure it still works. Okay, so there you go. It looks like it still works, so cutting it didn't damage it at all. Okay, so next thing I need to do is cut this pigtail so that I can strip the wires and solder them where they need to go on the board. Now, one of the problems I'm having here is that this shrink sleeve is over the interface between the wire and the strip itself, and that's creating almost an interference to the edge of the board here. It looks like it just barely fits. So I'm going to have to cut this back and then kind of bend it sharply to route the wires. In fact, what I might do is try and cut back this shrink tubing a bit if I can, just to bring this edge in a little more. And then I'll cut off some of the shrink tube here just to give myself as much room as possible. And again, I want to be careful that I don't nick the wires at this point. Okay, so what I need to do now is figure out where to route these wires. Now again, like we talked about earlier in the video, for whatever reason somebody notched the board here and then cut this trace. So what I'm going to need to do is run one of the wires over to this point prior to that trace cut. And then the other wire I should still be able to solder to this point, which is still connected to this ground plane that's kind of all here on this surface of the board. So when I cut this wire back, I want to make sure I leave myself enough wire in order to reach those points. Okay, so now let's strip these wires back. I want to make sure that I hold that pretty well so I don't pull it out of the end of the strip. So I went to solder this and I ended up having to replace the heating element in my iron, but I think we're good to go now. So what I'll do first is tin these wires just to make them a little easier to solder. So as you can see, I've got this all soldered in. Probably won't win any awards for IPC J standard soldering techniques, but it ought to work. So I think it's time to get everything reassembled and see if this is working now.
Okay, so let's see if this thing actually works. And it doesn't look like the backlight is on, but that's probably because I gotta turn the switch on. And there you go. Now the backlight is on. Okay, so it's not really as bright as I thought it might be, but it is working. I'm assuming that whatever voltage the scanner is putting out is just a little bit low for this particular strip, or, you know, the thing is from China, so who knows, maybe this is just what we're gonna get. But it does seem to be a bit of an improvement over what was there. Okay, so I guess I'd call this repair a success, or at least a partial success. The backlight is now working, it's just not quite as bright as I hoped it would be, but overall, it is an improvement over what I had, and the scanner only cost $5 in the first place. And of course, because I took the whole thing apart and put it back together, I now have to go back and reprogram everything that I had in there. So that's probably going to take longer than the actual repair did. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.